Today is May 19th, the sixth Tuesday of Easter. Our prayers and give us this day begin at page 200. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 6. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Reprove me not in your rage. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I languish. Lord, heal me, my bones are shaking, and my soul is greatly shaken. But you, O Lord, how long? Return, Lord, rescue my soul. Save me in your gracious love, for in death there is no remembrance of you. Who can give you praise from Sheol? I am exhausted with my groaning. Every night I drench my bed with tears. I bid you my couch with weeping. My eyes waste away with grief. They have grown weak, surrounded by all my foes. Leave me all who do evil, for the Lord heeds the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea. The Lord will receive my prayer. All my foes will be shamed and greatly shaken, suddenly put to shame. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Tonight's reading comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear news of you, that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, struggling together for the faith of the gospel, not intimidated in any way by your opponents. This is proof to them of destruction but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For to you has been granted, for the sake of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. Yours is the same struggle as you saw in me and now hear about me. The word of the Lord. Paul loved the people of Philippi. They would financially supported his missionary work. They sent a member of their own community, Epaphroditus, to care for him while he was imprisoned in Rome. And most importantly, they had accepted the faith and patterned their lives after the example of Christ. The Philippians were still being persecuted, however. That's why Paul encouraged them not to be intimidated and to recognize that their suffering more perfectly aligned them to Christ. Now, suffering is a miserable thing. And suffering for its own sake or endured without pushback is neither noble nor useful then it verges on being a disorder. Suffering, however, when it cannot be thrown off or avoided, can have some salutary results. Deeper understanding of the pain of others, growth in personal patience, even a measure of endurance 
that can encourage and strengthen others who suffer beside us or with us. There's an article in today's New York Times about a young woman who during these months of separation from her academic work as a senior at an Ivy League university, decided to work as a temporary morgue worker on the front lines of the pandemic in New York City. The article is moving and quite extraordinary. By suffering with the people of her city, she learned about her own resiliency. She learned about the dignity of human persons, even in death. And she learned about the wider context of why she chose a university education. I believe she suffered for the sake of Christ, even though she never used religious or specifically Christian vocabulary. If you get a chance, find the article online and then reread tonight's scripture passage. The young woman in Manhattan is a perfect example to us because she is doing exactly what Paul asked of his friends in Philippi. Paul and Silas sang hymns to God as the prisoners listened. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Paul and Silas sang hymns to God as the prisoners listened. Merciful God, you save us in your gracious love. We lift our needs to your care as we pray. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Release those who are unjustly imprisoned. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Relieve the burdens of those who live in poverty or deprivation of any kind. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive those who grieve into your loving embrace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all of those intentions in our hearts, we say, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. May God strengthen us to live in peace and manifest the wonders of Christ's love to our brothers and sisters by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a peaceful night.